Yo, what's going on, guys? And today, of course, we are doing the season predictions for the Indiana Pacers. So before we start today's video, I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. What is your predictions for the Pacers? Dude, I don't know why, but I feel like the Pacers this year could be like the Mavericks of the the East. I don't know. I don't know. It'll. I just think it's A, comes down to Tyrese Halbert and staying healthy. B, him sustaining his level of play. And C, the team's defense improving. I also want to talk about Pascal Siakam. Is, the acquisition of Pascal Siakam, I feel like, was one of the, his impact. Okay? If you were watching Indiana basketball, I don't think you realize that Pascal Siakam was exactly the guy that they needed. 2AT make he's been he's made an incredible impact for them and he averaged 21 points for them, eight rebounds, four assists. Like he was so solid for them. And I think that that's going to carry over. Him and Tyrese are a one two punch. I think they allow him to he plays off of Tyrese really well. And Miles Turner being a spacing big really helps Pascal's game. I just think the whole Rick Carlisle's coaching also helps Pascal maximize his potential. A guy who, as I said, averaged what 21, eight and a half rebounds, six assists, what not six assists, three assists, my apology, but and shot 36% from three. And was getting, you know, 53% from the field. I just think it's incredible what Pascal was doing out there. So, this is an Indiana team that, believe it or not, has championship aspirations, as they rightfully so should. And I know my prediction is, you know, the, the jump for Benedict Matherin is necessary. The jump for Andrew Nemard it, as a scorer is necessary if he remains a starter. I personally think Benedict Matherin will return, will become the starter, and then you have Andrew Nemar become the the sixth man. But as of right now, the Indiana Pacers are expected to win 46 and a half games, which we're going to go with 47 games. And if they were to win 47 games, that would put them again at the same spot as last year, the the sixth seed. But I've said this before. I think they're better than Bucks on paper. Everything until the Bucks prove us otherwise. The the Pacers, I think, are better, and I really do believe that the Pacers have a, a a a good case to be made that they are the third best team behind the Celtics and Knicks in the Eastern Conference, and that the the only other team I think that could you could say is in front of them is the Cavs. Now, I look at this roster. You know, you think starter, Tyrese Halliburton, right? You know, to close out the year, they had Andrew Nemard at shooting guard, Aaron Neesmith at small forward, power forward, Pascal Siaka, Miles Turner at center, six man, TJ McConnell. Then they add Ben Shepard, Benedict Matherin before he got hurt, and Obi Toppin and Isaiah Jackson as the second unit. And I expect all that to remain the same. I assume the, the hope is that Maybe you put Aaron Neesmith off the bench and Benedict Matherin starts if you want to keep Nemhard in the starting lineup. If not, you replace Nemhard with Matherin, and then you have this huge lineup of 6'6", Halber, and 6'6", Matherin, 6'6", Aaron Neesmith, then you got yourself 6'9", Pascal, and then the 6'11", Miles Turner there that I think is perfect with Isaiah Jackson being a solid backup big and then the like, I think they went from one reclamation project to the other. Jalen Smith the sticks Jalen Stick Smith was a reclamation project for the Pacers when he got waived by the Suns and that worked out great and now they get James Wiseman who they're just gonna tell him just do the same thing there. Just come in for like 18 minutes a night. Just dunk anything within the vicinity of five feet and just put backs and block shots and still foul. And they're gonna hope that Jairus Walker is another guy that takes a jump. He might be a little green but and that's the other thing is that Obi Toppin is a guy who's got, you know, who's looking like he has something to prove. And they brought, they, you know, they drafted Johnny Furphy, which I love. 
Ben Shepard's another shooter who's going to be taking a jump that I like. They still have Kendall Brown and James Johnson. I think James Johnson's good on the team. Kendall Brown's a not guaranteed. He could get waived. Tyler Bowley and Cole Swider are two guys who are competing for two-way spots that Quinn Jackson, Tristan Newman, and Enrique Freeman are occupying. Freeman and Newman are two guys that are locked to make the roster. I knew they were in a draft Freeman since April, but I think Cole Swider is the only one who could probably get Quinn Jackson to be, you know, I guess waived but yeah i think right here the biggest prediction is the the pacers are going to surprise people because all their players develop and they take the jump or they realize that their young players aren't ready and and they go ahead and consolidate them for a set trade now who would they trade for? I don't know, but I think they realize that they have a championship window right now. And with Obi Toppin's contract and all these other guys who, who have gotten contracts with the Pacers and because of how they've structured these deals, they could go out and swing for someone. So what do I mean by all these contracts? I think Halliburton, Siakam, and Turner are a hundred percent safe in terms of like not being traded, but Obi Toppin's making 12.9, which is really good value. Aaron Neesmith, 11. And I think they want to keep Neesmith, same thing with TJ McConnell, but just between McConnell, Neesmith, and Obi Toppin, you have right there about roughly one is what is that 22 million plus so 33 million between those three guys and you still have Jairus Walker Isaiah Jackson who each make those two combined just under 8 million which bring you to 40 million of dollars to play with as guys you could use as and if you even want to have Ben Shepard 2.2 like those are all or 2.6 my apology are all contracts that if they were going to go out and consolidate those players for a superstar, A, that's the package you want to be making. You got two recently signed young guys in like Aaron e. Smith and Obi Toppin, then guys on rookie contracts like Ajaris Walker, Ben Shepard, and then you have the expirings of Isaiah Jackson that people would be interested in that are better in like TJ McConnell that teams could be interested in. Now, as I said, what could you go out and play with that? Who could realistically be someone that would be available this, this season? I, and like, I don't think Jeremy Grant is putting you over the edge. I really, I don't, I don't think that's a guy. And I don't think going out and getting a Zach Levine would change that. I mean, at that point, if you're making a move of that magnitude, it has to be for a small forward. And that's where I guess some will say Jeremy Grant might be the best small forward available. And that is, quite honestly, very true. And we, like an OG and an OB would have been perfect for this team. So, and I don't think going out and getting Brandon Ingram because Brandon Ingram needs the ball in his hands to like read for himself is the is a smart move i doubt the the grizzlies would be trading desmond bain because that's a he's perfect for them nor do i think michael porter jr is worth giving up for any of the, like those assets so then you start to look around and you're like there isn't really a trade for them now i think pascal siakam was the guy that they could get to make them better now the all Look, the only way I see a deal, if they need a backup point guard that they, they feel like they need a, a sixth man that they don't have, this one, they would not need to give up any picks. I really think a deal of a realistically Obi Toppin and the package of Obi Toppin, Aaron Neesmith, and Isaiah Jackson... I believe would get it done. And you might even be able to take Isaiah Jackson off that. But Jordan Poole, 
you wouldn't have to give up any draft assets. I just think the the Wizards would just want salary filler and a young guy or young guys. But that would be literally if you're the team is perfect and they just are struggling with their bench unit and like all they've exhausted all options. But again, going if they don't believe like. Ben Matherin or Shepard or Avail or Ready. It is going seeing if a Miles Bridges or maybe a Tyler Hero could be that. I think Tyler Hero is a guy who could come in and really help them and elevate their ceiling as their as a starting shooting guard. I think Miles Bridges as a wing is another guy. So I think they're going to be on the hunt to find like even I, I think Kyle Kuzma and Pascal play the same position and Kyle at three I just don't like especially because it would move stuff. So right there, I mean, Cam Johnson's a dark horse name because he could play the three. I don't love it, but like it works. Same thing with DeAndre Hunter. But like, what are you giving up? Again, the contracts that work is it would be basically either Obi Toppin and Aaron Neesmith with salary or with other, with young guys to make those work. So is that even worth it? It's just, it's hard to decide. Let me know guys. Your opinions.